This bonus episode is brought to you by Nurtec ODT Remedjapant, 75 milligrams, orally disintegrating tablets. Hello, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're pulling back the curtain to reveal women overlooked in their own lifetimes or in our historical accounts of the eras in which they lived. We're talking about the activists, thinkers, leaders, artists, and innovators history has forgotten. Imagine this. You're in the kitchen trying out a new dessert recipe. You have all the right ingredients. You have all your cups and bowls and spoons. You consult the recipe, but there aren't any measurements. At least, not ones you can follow. You have no idea how much a goodly amount of flour is. Your handful is surely a different size than someone else's. Once you take it all out of the oven, the result is... Your cake is a dry, crumbly mess. This may seem silly today, but recipes might still have vague measurement descriptions if it wasn't for the work of today's Womanikin. Let's talk about Fanny Farmer. Fanny Farmer was born on March 23, 1857 in Boston. When Fanny was a teenager, she experienced what was likely a case of polio, which left her with some lower body paralysis. She had to drop out of school and spent most of her time at home. When she was in her 20s, she was finally permitted to work. She took a job as a governess for a family where she explored her culinary knowledge. When Fanny was 31 years old, she decided to expand her cooking and enroll in the Boston Cooking School. She graduated in 1889, and her skills were so impressive that she was asked to join the staff as the school's assistant director. Five years later, Fanny was named head of the school. That's where she was working when she changed everything for home cooks. In 1896, Fanny Farmer self-published the Boston Cooking School Cookbook. While Fanny's cookbook was far from the first of its kind, it was the first to standardize level measurements. Before Fanny's book, many recipes called for handfuls of flour or pinches of salt. This vague measurement system made it difficult for the everyday woman to follow recipes, leading to far from tasty results. Fanny stressed the importance of precision, and her recipes called for cups and teaspoons. Because of that, her recipes just worked. Fanny's cookbook was a follow-up to Mrs. Lincoln's Boston Cookbook, which was published by her teacher and colleague, Mary J. Lincoln. Publishers were skeptical Fanny's book would see any success. So they made her finance the first printing. The initial 3,000 copy run quickly sold out. Luckily for Fanny, she kept the copyright and the profits. This great success meant Fanny was sought after for her expertise. She taught a course at Harvard Medical School on diet and nutrition. She was also the food editor for the magazine Women's Home Companion. In 1902, she opened her own cooking school, Miss Farmer's School of Cookery, to train housewives. Fanny printed 21 editions of her cookbook, continuously updating it with new recipes. And the cookbook eventually gained a new name, the Fanny Farmer Cookbook. During Fanny's lifetime, 360,000 copies were sold. The book has remained in print ever since. And by the 1990s, it had sold 4 million copies, making it one of the best-selling cookbooks of all time. Fanny's systemization of measurements made cooking more accessible and inspired generations of cooks. Julia Child herself remembered learning to cook as a child with her mother and Fanny's cookbook. Over time, though, Fanny's cookbook lost its post as the singular kitchen Bible. Notably, it was eclipsed by The Joy of Cooking, which was published in 1931. Fanny Farmer died on January 15, 1915, at the age of 57. While her name was largely forgotten over time, her legacy is wide-reaching. Because of her, cooking evolved from an inherent skill to a masterable science. By creating a structure to recipes and by stressing the importance of exact measurements, cooking became accessible. All month, we've been talking about women behind the curtain. 
For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you on Monday. If you're prescribed Nurtec ODT, Remedjapan 75 milligrams for migraine attacks, does the fear of running out of medication stop you from treating every migraine attack? If so, ask about two eight-packs per month. That's 16 tablets, and most insurance plans cover it. Nurtec ODT is approved for the acute treatment of migraine attacks and preventive treatment of episodic migraine in adults. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec ODT or any of its ingredients. Allergic reactions can occur even days after using and include trouble breathing, rash, and swelling of the face, mouth, tongue, or throat. Most common side effects were nausea and indigestion stomach pain. A maximum dose of 75 milligrams can be taken daily to treat migraine attacks or every other day to prevent them. The safety of using more than 18 doses of Nurtec ODT in a 30-day period has not been established. For full prescribing information, call 1-833-4-NURTEC or visit nurtech.com. Double the packs to treat more migraine attacks. Ask your doctor if two 8-packs of Nurtec ODT is right for you.